so let's create the basic components uh, module and uh, we go under system and as I said not into modules but into settings and then we will create a module for renderings so uh, that's why I think feature is a good um, good location. Now we have created already a folder called SXA tutorial, so for our tenant, and uh, we will create uh, a new module that we will put into that folder SXA tutorial. So we're doing a right click on the feature item and use the insert option to create a new module. And this, okay, do I want to save changes? Yeah, why not? Um, and then I want to um, name it uh, basic components and uh, important is that I now select the right folder where I want to add my module to. So this will be the SXA tutorial folder. Now remember um, it, there will be another folder created for me automatically that's called basic components underneath the SXA tutorial folder. So I don't have to create one myself um, and then I have to select in which areas I want to create um, a folder structure pre-created uh, using the name of my module. So I will leave all of them. Um, and I only want to create a site setup um, uh, module. Uh, I don't need a tenant setup module for my renderings. So um, probably everything's good to go. So let's proceed. The script is running that helps me creating everything. And now I can see that I have a folder called basic components and I have my basic component site setup item here, uh, which is currently um, yeah, the base for everything. So um, what I'm going to do now is uh, I'm going to clone a rendering um, for the client's teaser. Uh, and we've done that before, so nothing new. Um, so quickly going through that. So I'm going to my renderings. Uh, or not my renderings, but the renderings that are created by uh, SXA. And I'm choosing the promo that I really like to be um, as, as a base for cloning. So I'm doing a right click on the pro promo rendering, um, going to scripts and choosing the clone rendering script and um, applying my name. So that will be clients teaser. And I also apply um, a CSS class directly to it, clients teaser, and important to say, I add my module now to it. Otherwise, it will be installed in the SXA path, which is not ideal and then um, requires some manual interaction to, um, to clean it up later on. So it's not the carousel, but it's the basic components. So that's all set. Um, I usually like to make a copy of the uh, rendering parameters and also of the data source, and I will not create a dedicated view. So I will just use for now the original view and proceed. So, so now this is creating a new rendering for me uh, in, my, um, in my module. So let's have a look. Uh, what has happened. So if I go to my module again, SXA tutorial and then basic components, you now see that certain scaffolding actions has been added um, to my site setup. So there is now an available renderings. Um, uh, no, there is now an item of the template. It's probably a branch template available client teaser renderings added to the location available renderings, which you find under presentation here. And it doesn't have uh, a name so far, so I will call it basic components. And this will be also later on the name that's shown in the toolbox. Now um, let's save it and see what else has been created. So in the templates, I'm just going first into the data templates, we see uh, in the SXA tutorial, basic components. We have here a client teaser template and along with it a client teaser folder and also the rendering parameters for it copied. So later on when we work on that component, we can um, specify the, the fields that we need for that component and so on. So then we have the um, a few branch templates that have been created for us. So there is, uh, let's see, there is the basic components. So we see a branch template for the available renderings. So that adds the item in the available rendering section and it will add the rendering client teaser directly to it. So it's available later on in the toolbox. So once we install the module, uh, 
the client teaser component will be automatically seen in the two box. Now then we also have uh, the rendering variants and this is copied from promo. So this is probably something we need to clean up before we install it uh, to our site because uh, we prefer to work with Scriven and uh, synchronize directly to our site. Yeah, you see that here is the dollar name token being used as the as the item name, yes. which means that the uh, name that Sebastian has given uh, earlier uh, in the scaffolding steps is being used. Therefore, so if you would change this from dollar name to another name, then that value would not be used when creating the new section. Right. And I think last but not least, we have then the renderings. So as we cloned our renderings, we can see it has been created in SXA tutorials folder of the renderings folder uh, into basic components. And then here's our new rendering just cloned from a promo. So let's quickly do that also for the others that we need under that section. So again, cloning promo um, the same way, just quickly do it. Um, and the first one, the next one is uh, the features teaser. Oh, come on features teaser and um, assigning again the right uh, module so that will be basic components and uh, I will also adjust directly the feature uh, the CSS class uh, features teaser uh, I will also have a dedicated rendering parameters dedicated data source and leave the view for now so let's create this one And as you can see, this is some kind of, let's say, bulk operations. So I'm uh, creating more and more renderings. And in a dedicated tutorial, we will take care about really working on those renderings. But uh, so I have most of the backend done, uh, backend work done, and just need to do the front end stuff to display them uh, uh, later on on the screen in in the way that I want to have it, and of course uh, adjust the templates. So the next one is the Teams teaser. Uh, Teams teaser again assign it to my module so it's as I say tutorial basic components and also give it the CSS class teams teaser make a copy make a copy views fine proceed and done and next one uh, scripts clone rendering so next one on the list is the skills overview skills. yeah while this may seem like a repetitive task it does give you a lot of flexibility later on if we want to make changes to a certain teaser or uh, well, whatever component we would use in inside of our module we can just just do that on those items instead um, obviously there are also ways of doing this um, while well, combining all those tasks by making uh, steps that just add a component or uh, add multiple components all at once make multiple data folders and things like that you can go as wild and as, and as crazy as you would uh, want to go uh, but right now for our purpose this this fits very well as we are doing the plumbing more or less right now and will define or uh, specify all the tasks uh, specific tasks later on yes so last component for now just not to annoy with uh, repeating tasks here, make a copy, that's also fine. Proceed. So creating five new components in probably not more than five minutes. So wow. um, as we can see, we have now our renderings. Um, let's refresh this one. So we will also see um, all the uh, scaffolding actions so far also for the rendering variants and uh, in templates we will see all the branch templates and templates that we have created uh, along with the cloning uh, and all sorted um, very consistent in the basic components folder so i think this is a very clean way of uh, developing things and not care caring too much but still have it consistent consistent so all and, uh, our templates if i'm not mistaken we do need to give in the, the name manually for the uh, component items or not? You might mean in the scaffolding action? Yeah, exactly. Yes, so um, that's what I did uh, in the beginning. So we have the um, available renderings 
and uh, I gave this name basic components. That's a good point just to repeat that because um, it's going now from it, uh, once I install this module, it's going from top to bottom through all my scaffolding actions, and it would have failed directly on the first one because the name field is not filled automatically because you have to choose basically where to put your renderings. And uh, this is something to keep in mind. So before installing it, really go through all the scaffolding actions. Make sure that uh, the first three fields here of your add site item uh, scaffolding actions are filled properly. Um, and, and of course, meaningful because, uh, yeah, I think add available renderings is only once available, so that should be fine. But it should uh, also have all our components, so we can also double check that by going to uh, the template that's going to be added. So it's the uh, which one is it? It's the available clients teaser renderings. So that's the one uh, that we have here and find in. Uh, our branch template. So going to the name and we see that it adds all the components into the same section of our toolbox um, as as we want to have it. If if we want to separate that, of course, we can add another site uh, uh, site uh, item creation scaffolding action and just separate these into different uh, toolbox sections. Uh, but that's I mean, that's exactly how we want it to have. So that's all fine. So if you want to test this right now, what would be the, the proper way? Would that be to set up a new site with just having that component, uh, that module being selected in the in the insert new site option or? No, I think, um, well, one thing we don't want to do is, yeah, let's, let's maybe quickly clean up the rendering variants um, because we don't want to install the rendering variants to our site. Well, if we clean it up here or later, that uh, doesn't make a difference, I think. Um, let's quickly do that. So um, this is uh, representing later on the installed rendering rendering variants, and we basically don't want to have that because it reflects a promo, and we don't want to uh, have the promo, but uh, rather the uh, our own. So um, let me see. Delete sub items. Okay. Is it deleting? Yes, it is. So let's quickly do that for the others as well. Uh, delete sub items, okay. Not here, but here. So quickly cleaning that up. And the error that you see right now is something that you can ignore while you're working on templates because it in kind of says that it can't find the right templates in the current tenant, which is true because the template itself is not being used within a tenant. Uh, right. Good point. Yeah, not being not being. Uh, what's the word? I don't know. OK, so I think our module is good to go. Uh, we've cleaned that up, so let's just install it to our site. I think we don't have to create another site. It would appear so if we if we uh, go into the new site dialog, our new module should be in the list. So we have here the basic components now listed for every new site. We can check it as we didn't make it um, uh, checked by default. So that's why it's uh, appearing here like that. Um, so that's already fine, but we don't want to create a new site. We just want to install this new module to our site. So therefore, we do right click on the site uh, and using the context menu on the item scripts and then add site module. So we see that two modules haven't been installed yet and we want to install the basic components. Now, um, we didn't show in the earlier uh, theoretical part of the tutorial how to install it actually from the module. So I think now we can just use that option. So I'm canceling it for now. And um, because once you create a new module and if you, if you have multiple sites, it could make sense to install it directly from the module itself. So also going to uh, scripts and install site module. And now I will see all the sites that do not have this uh, module installed yet. So currently we have only one site, uh, so it doesn't make sense if I install the module on the site or if I install the module from the module itself. 
Um, so I will just install this module now this way and hit the OK button and let's see. So this one should create now all the items that we need. And um, the more item that needs to be created, the longer it takes for the installation. Now there seems to be an error. Let's see if there's anything meaningful in it. Uh, templates. Not sure about this one, but let's maybe just confirm if all the items that we expect to have are also installed into our site. <clears throat> so um, we wanted, to, uh, we will expect something here in our data folder. So we will expect the features teaser, the clients teaser. We have the insert options to add new clients teaser folders and um, uh, data sources. We expect to have. Um, the skills overview. What was the other one? Clients, features, teams, ST, teams. Here we go with the teams, inserting new teams teaser. Uh, and the testimonial, last but not least. So also here, everything set up. So that looks correct. So I'm not sure if the arrow really affected us. Now, um, the other thing that we expect to have is another section in our available renderings. Um, to, to um, show the components in the toolbox. So there is a basic components um, uh, item and it contains our renderings already assigned. So that has been done as well. And last but not least, let's check the rendering variants. So also here I can see that there's a client teaser uh, having the default variant, but no markup defined yet. So this is uh, something for one of the next tutorials to go over all of these uh, components and make them look as they should. So clients teaser, uh, features teasers here as well. Um, what else? Teams teaser. There's the skills overview. There's a teams teaser and the testimonial. So all set up beside the arrow that we uh, that we saw. I think everything has been set up as expected. And um, yeah, now it would be good to go to actually design our components. <clears throat> 